in what might go down as the dumbest move since the Portland Trailblazers skipped on Michael Jordan in the 1984 draft. This move by USA Women's Basketball to skip on Caitlin Clark just gets more bizarre and stupid by the actual second. Uh, in this video, we hear that more and more people have come out just talking about how Caitlin Clark deserves to be on this team from a basketball skills standpoint and what it could do to the game. Uh, and we're going to break down what is the official rationale given by the committee, why they skipped on her, and why that was just boneheaded on so many different fronts. If you're new to this channel, my name is Ben. I'm part of the Daily Huddle. And on this channel, we talk about the biggest news in sports. We keep you up to date with a comment section that is absolutely popping because this is all about the community around sports. Just talking sports with your boys and with your girls all about Caitlin Clark and way, way more. So what we heard today is that commissioner of the NBA, Adam Silver, who's just done leaps and bounds to grow this game. Uh, he came out and he really started his quote off with like a giant caveat, just being like, hey, I have nothing to do with USA basketball. So all of that aside, it would have been nice to see her on the floor. She's one of the most popular players in the game right now. And the ratings demonstrate that. So he said, hey, I, I had nothing to do with this decision, but she should have been on the floor. I would have liked to see that. And so would the whole world. And then he ends with saying, like, my mandate's a little different. My job is to grow the game uh, and make people love basketball. And their mandate was to make the best team. And so that's what we're hearing from um, from the committee chair about why they skipped on her. They said it would have been irresponsible for us to talk about Clark in any way other than how she would impact the team. Our job was to create the best team that we could for the coach, Cheryl Reeve. So what they're saying is the Olympic Committee is saying, hey, our job is to build the best team. Caitlin Clark's not one of the best players, so therefore we, we didn't make the cut. Well, that is just absolutely bogus for just a number of reasons. The first reason is that the Team USA women's basketball team is the most dominant team in the Olympics right now. They have won seven straight Olympic games. And as I was looking back through like their record, uh, they haven't gotten, even in that gold medal game, which is supposed to be like the tightest game that there is, uh, they beat Serbia. This was uh, two or four years ago. They, The gold medal game, they win by 20 points. Four years before that, they won by 30 points. Four years before that, they won by 40 points almost. And so like the Olympic team, it has the talent. They just run over these girls out there. Like it's not even a, a close thing. I truly believe that you could take the best college basketball team and go and win the Olympic gold with it. So the fact that you're like, oh, we're just trying to have the best players and this is going to be a real nail biter. And if our 12th man off the bench or our 12th girl off the bench isn't good enough, we might lose the gold. That's not even a consideration. No one can even name a single foreign born uh, superstar. The other reason this is dumb. So reason number one, this is dumb is that competitively, we don't need any more advantages. We are good. We are the best team on the planet earth with women's basketball and no one can even debate that. The second thing is that Team USA basketball, international basketball rules are really different than WNBA basketball rules. The first thing is that the three-point line is considerably closer. So can you imagine, like, you want to talk about competitiveness? Imagine Caitlin Clark three feet closer to the three-point line. Like, she is just going to set scoring records. So you're talking about her game translates extremely well. The other thing is that uh, they call traveling and carrying a lot closer in international basketball than they do in the WNBA and the NBA. And she's just a fundamentally sound player who does not rely on like carrying or traveling and doing extra steps. Like she's a catch and shoot player. She does not need any of those advantages. So you just can't tell me that she wouldn't go to the international stage and absolutely dominate. That's reason number two why this is just absolutely baffling. The next reason that this is absolutely baffling is that we know that international play is what changes the future of what the WNBA looks like. So not only is every house in America going to have on the Olympics and that ba, 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 that song comes on and like everyone's going to be around their TV and they're watching and that's when I remember first seeing Michael Jordan play was when he played for Team USA. And so you're talking about you're losing out on all of that national traffic of watching the gold medal game and seeing that get hung around the the, the neck of a, a player who you fall in love with there so that you're missing out on those eyes. But then we just see what the dream team in 1992 did for the growth of the NBA. And if you look at the NBA today, 
you could easily make an argument that if you took an all-star list of players who were born in America and took an all-star player, uh, uh, all-star list of players born anywhere else in the world and had them compete, that the American born players would get smoked. So on the international stage, you got Doncic, Giannis, Embiid, you got Shea Gildress Alexander, obviously Nikola Jokic, you got um, Jamal Murray. You're talking some beasts there. And really, our best American player now, you got LeBron and Kevin Durant towards the end of their career. Maybe Ant Man is stepping up there. But you're just looking at the international talent has completely changed the NBA for the better. And, uh, you know, I, I was looking up this stat here that I thought was just staggering uh, that before the 1992 Olympic games where did i have it up here um oh man it closed down on me but it, it was something like there was 20 some international players before the dream team went over and now we have like a hundred or something like that let me see if i can pull it up here quick um uh here we go um all right so before the Dream Team, there were 20, 23 international players in the history of the NBA. And this year in the NBA, we have 109 current players. And I just laid went through the list there that there are some insanely talented um, foreign-born players. And that is all because of the hype that Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson and Larry Bird drew when they went over. So not only does Caitlin Clark have all the physical tools that she needs and actually a game that's way more suited to her play style with a closer three with more closely called travels and carries and all that kind of stuff. But also when she goes overseas and she draws a Taylor Swift type crowd, that is only going to like help the WNBA product in years to come because the then little girls born in Serbia are like, oh, Caitlin Clark, I want to be like that. And that's exactly what Giannis Antetokounmpo said. He grew up watching those teams. That's what Jokic says. He grew up watching those teams and wanting to be that. Uh, and until that happens, I think our WNBA game is truly going to be a watered down product. And we're seeing what Caitlin Clark is doing that games in the middle of Indiana are selling out and you're hearing her her teammates being interviewed like, I've never played in front of crowds like this. And that's because Caitlin Clark really is the Steph Curry of the NBA now, of the WNBA. I, Steph changed the game, and you watch how kids practice at a, a open gym you, you swing by, and you're watching kids practice like half-court lobs and, and stuff like that that they never used to do before because Steph changed the game, and I think Caitlin Clark could do the same for women's game as well. So let me know in the comments, am I way off base? Could Caitlin Clark step in and score 20 points in an international game? I don't think there's any competition, any, any uh, debate the other way, but I could be totally off on there. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think, what kind of content you want on here, because this is all for you. Thanks for huddling up.